If you wish to have a copy of these slides, please feel free to go to Twitter and find me at Benjamin Ang. The address is on the slide. And these slides are available for you to download there. Our agenda for this morning will be covered in four parts. And I would like to go through these four parts with enough time for you to ask me questions after each segment. So at the end of every segment, I will give time for Q&A and also for anybody who needs to get up and take a stretch and move around or get yourself another coffee. Because I realize that if we sit down for two hours, it's not healthy. So I will give time at the end of each of these sections for Q&A. Please feel free to post your questions in the chat as well. I will look at the chat after at the end of each section and try to answer any questions that you have. The first item on the agenda I want to cover this morning is the cyber domain and the threats that are facing us. There are many different kinds of cyber threat actors and you may have seen charts like this before. I want to explain how it is relevant to you from a cyber warfare point of view. The most popular image in the public mind is hacktivism, where you have hacktivists, people like anonymous group, where they use the computer networks to advance a social cause. They're hacking in because they want the world to know that they are unhappy about a certain social topic. Also very famous are criminals. And nowadays it's not just an individual criminal who's running a scam. Many of them are actually part of organized criminal groups. They are organized. They even have officers. They have working hours. They have a HR department. And they are very well suited to carry out these crimes as a matter of their career. Third category is insiders. People who are inside our organizations already, these are the very troubling because they have access to all the very sensitive things and if they leak, it can cause a lot of damage to our organizations. Think of Edward Snowden. Edward Snowden had access to a lot of very sensitive materials at the NSA and when he leaked it, it was a serious breach. Espionage, of course, is spies. And every nation state has spies who in the past would have been deployed to gather intelligence on the ground. And nowadays, these spies can work from home. It's not just because of pandemic, it's because all of our sensitive information and data is stored online in servers. So a lot of spies will work through the networks. Terrorism is a threat which has been thought of before, we can imagine that if extremists were to conduct a cyber attack that knocked down, for example, the electricity grid, then it could cause a lot of hardship to the country. Or if they were to take over the air traffic control, it could cause aircraft to crash. However, this threat has not yet surfaced. It's a theoretical threat so far. And then last but not least, what we're talking about today is cyber warfare, where nation states will sabotage your military infrastructure or your civilian infrastructure in the case of a conflict. The reason why I wanted to go through these different actors is that when a cyber attack happens, they don't come with nice icons like this. You do not see them in a way that you can say, oh, I know that this attack is now coming from a hacktivist, this attack is now coming from a criminal, or it's coming from a spy, or it's an act of war. They don't label themselves when they attack. You just notice that somebody is stealing documents, documents start getting copied out, or maybe data starts getting erased, or maybe something shuts down. There is no uniform that they are wearing, no identity or mask that you can see. That is the beginning of the issue of cyber warfare. And this is very relevant to us in ASEAN. ASEAN is vulnerable to cyber threats because we need the cyberspace for digital transformation and economic progress. Especially in these times of pandemic, 
the digital economy is very very important when people are not able to move around as freely as before and the digital economy is available to anybody who can get online but member states have different levels of cyber security this is the fact that we cannot ignore that out of just ASEAN alone 10 member states some have a more advanced view of cyber security and the resources and then some just don't have the capability to protect their networks or their people and we can't say that oh some will be okay some won't be okay because a cyber attacker will attack ASEAN member states through the weakest member state they will not attack front on the most well protected member state they will look for the least protected member state enter the network there and then go from country to country through things like the ASEAN smart city network where we are all connected and because we are all connected the weakest one becomes the weakest link that attackers will come through example ASEAN power grid projects the ASEAN power grid is set up so that there can be sharing of power between countries that are producing more and countries who need to consume more and this is very good in terms of spreading the load of power production and consumption it's very good for trade and it's very good for evening out the supply when everything is fine but all of this depends on computer networks and it com depends on computer networks to ensure that power is supplied to the respective states which means that if there's a cyber attack then you could knock out from one country you could knock out another country and this would be a very good way to i say good as in this would be a very effective way to conduct cyber warfare you don't even have to attack the power supply in the target country you attack in the country which has perhaps weaker cyber security and if we look at this chain we can see that some of these countries may have stronger and some of these may have weaker cyber security there are also national smart grids in some countries and yours and mine are using smart grids these smart grids are power grids which use technology to generate and deliver and control the consumption of electrical energy so the meters that are in the house are actually connected to the internet through this thing called iot internet of things the internet of things allows the meter to tell the main system this neighborhood is using more power this neighborhood is using less power and then balance the load so that we don't have peaks or troughs which might cause a blackout or cause a brownout and the smart grid helps to regulate power consumption and that's a good thing it's been used in singapore malaysia indonesia and the philippines but it's also vulnerable because it's all computers if you can hack into the computer you could actually knock out the electricity of a country which is another way that mm -hmm. cyber warfare can be conducted so right now we know that ASEAN countries have been targeted and attacked I'm just going to cite you examples from 2018 and 2019 2020 there's more there's definitely more but these are the big well-known ones and I of course start from home in Singapore our Ministry of Defense and Singapore Arms Forces had the personal information of 2,400 personnel leaked and how did this happen ha, they went through a third-party vendor email and because somebody clicked on that email it put in a malware and it was able to get out the information of 2400 military personnel in Singapore also this is an insider threat 
the insider information of 14,000 people diagnosed with HIV AIDS were taken by the ex-lover of a doctor who had access. This is so much like a drama story, but it was real that the doctor who had access to this very sensitive data of people who have been diagnosed with HIV, his ex-lover stole the data on a thumb drive and leaked it. So that's an insider threat. Thailand and Vietnam uh, had the Toyota customer data taken. Philippines, what I understand from the reports is that 82,000 customers of Wendy's had their personal data taken. So I like a Wendy's burger as much as anybody else. I would be most upset if my personal information had actually been leaked from there. And I understand there was also a large pawn shop called Cebuana where 900,000 customers information was leaked. In Thailand, 45,000 customers of True Corp Mobile were leaked. And in Malaysia, 46 million mobile subscribers data was leaked. And of course, in Singapore, we had more than a million medical records leaked in our Sing Health breach, including the Prime Minister's data was targeted. So there was the healthcare system, one and a half million records that were breached by an attacker, including the Prime Minister's data. So all of us have been attacked at some point or another recently. This is because of this thing called Advanced Persistent Threats, APTs. You will hear this from time to time, an APT or Advanced Persistent Threat is a way of describing usually a nation state that is advanced, meaning that they have the technology, the skills, the resources. They are persistent, which means once they get into your network, they stay there. They are not like activists who are there to smash and grab and make a political statement. They are not like criminals who are there to quickly steal and run. They are persistent because they are sitting in there planning something, planning their threats. And you can see like the Kaspersky company has actually listed the whole number. Uh, these APTs, the names are given by the cybersecurity companies. Huh? They, they don't actually have a kind of like label on them. Hi, I am the funny dream APT. I'm here to attack you. There's no such label. These labels are given by the cybersecurity companies to identify what they have seen and which countries have been targeted by these APTs and who are being targeted. You can see the target countries are Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, Singapore, Laos, Indonesia, all of us. The target entities are high-level government organizations, political parties, diplomats, defense. And why are they doing this? For economic and geopolitical intelligence gathering, spying. That's why they are persistent. They are sitting in our networks. And a senior technology expert told me that you can just assume for the most part that there is somebody in your network at this point in time. It's a like espionage. You have to assume at some point there is a spy somewhere. And we have to be able to deal with it. There's another aspect which is information operations in ASEAN, which is sometimes called fake news. And Facebook here had actually taken down many accounts. Now, information operations is a very troubling grey area here in cyber. And we'll talk more about it as we go further down. Of course, cybercrime is huge. And Interpol has reported an increase since 2019. And of course, 2020, when the numbers come out, will be more. Botnets are when they can take over multiple devices. Like, they'll take over the computers in individual people's homes. Or they'll take over your CCTV. Or they'll take over your smart TV. Or take over your um, internet attached fridge or something and then use it to launch an attack on somebody else. Phishing is when you receive an email that says click here because you have won the lottery 
and you amaze the number of people who actually click on that link and then the malware gets planted. Business email compromise is when people send an email pretending to be your boss saying, urgently, I need you to send me this document or I need you to transfer this money. Banking malware is when you receive, as again, usually from phishing, you click on a link and you think that it's bringing you to your banking website to check your password, but actually you're giving your password away to a criminal. Ransomware is when your computer is taken over by the cyber criminals and they demand a ransom, otherwise they will delete all your data. I'll give you a hint first, there's no point paying because you have no guarantee that they will. Mm -hmm. And last one is crypto jacking. Crypto jacking is when your computer is taken over to mine cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. So this vulnerability is due to transactions are now faster, more people are connected, so there's a bigger number of people, targets to hit. The economy is growing, digital economy, and Asia is becoming the hub. But unfortunately, with all this happening, we still lack cybersecurity investment. So it's a perfect, there's more victims and all not protected, and low awareness as well. So more work needs to be done to prevent a cyber war. There are UN groups which I'll talk about at, in the fourth section. And the UN says the international law applies to cyber operations. And in ASEAN, officially our ministers have said we agree. But what amount to an act of war? That's something we'll discuss in the next section. So I now take a pause for answering any questions that you may have.